sexy to you. Maybe it's a shirtless wet Channing Tatum, maybe it's Jennifer Lawrence in American Hustle, or maybe it's a juicy filet mignon with a little blue cheese crumble, um, a little applewood smoked bacon, and some garlic chips. I'm Natalia Arbolita, and you're tuned into another segment of Clean Eats, and you probably think I'm losing, losing it, but that's right. Food can actually be really sexy. And just to prove it to you, I'm joined by Scott Johnson of Sexy Food TV to show us a little bit about making some sexy food at home. Hi, how are you? I'm good, yourself? I'm doing really well. So you do um, a YouTube channel. Yep. It's called Sexy Food TV, mm -hmm. so it's all about sexy food. That's right, and right. sexy drinks. And sexy drinks. Um, I actually, yeah, I had a chance to actually watch um, the Kickstarter video. It was mm -hmm. really awesome. Um, I like your honesty. You know, you talk a little bit about you're not actually a professionally trained chef, mm -hmm. and I think you say that the only professional cooking you've done was the two years you worked in a pizza kitchen as a teen, right? That's right, and so, I make good pizza. And you make good pizza too. <laughs> so tell me a little bit more about your love of food. Uh, well, basically, I've always gone out to restaurants. I love restaurants. I've seen these amazing chefs cooking amazing meals, and I've wanted to do it myself. So I sit in, re regardless of how complicated it is, I go on the internet, research it, and find a way to do it. But I love food. Me too. So I'm glad you're here today. And I love drinking because you, you do um, do a lot of cocktails. Mm -hmm. um, with each episode, you're going to be teaching us how to pair wines as well with each of the courses that you that you teach us to cook as well. Yep. So if I'm doing everything that you say, following your recipes and your, your, your drinks and you know your wine suggestions, what are my chances of getting lucky on my first date? Well, <laughs> it's a lot easy. It's a lot easier to do that if your bedroom is five minutes away from where you're eating, okay, rather so rather okay. than a long drive. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, uh, I wanted to also um, point out um, plating. Plating is a really big thing about making food sexy. Plating's key. I mean. Just like with your date, if it looks really good, it doesn't mean it's going to be good on the inside, but at least you can make it really attractive <laughs> from the outside. So even if the food doesn't necessarily taste amazing, you can at least make it look good because half of eating is looking at it. Um, there's this saying I, I always I like to quote. I don't know where I got this quote from, but it says that, and I'm, you know what, I'm going to just stop right here because I think it was for sure a man that was just trying to trick his wife into cooking him a nice meal, but the saying goes, a way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Is that, is that true? Uh, I suppose that's true, but the same, could, the same could be said about women, so I found out, especially with cooking like this. Okay. Well, yeah, you mentioned that in your video, all, all, the, all the lovers that, you know, have, have tried your food, apart from your friends and family, mm -hmm. a, few, a few lovers, right? Yeah, a couple. So, how much of a turn-on, I guess, is it for, you know, on the flip side, right? Because women do a lot of cooking for men, but now on the flip side, as a male, mm -hmm. cooking for women. How, how does that work out? It seems to work out pretty well. I mean, maybe that's a better question to be asking you. I mean... <laughs> Okay. But it seems yeah, to work I, I quite well. I, I think it's pretty hot. So let's get to it. So you actually are going to be you're going to be making a few things for us today. Yeah. So we're going to make a drink. We got some scallops. We're going to do some plating with that. And we're kind of playing with this uh, sweet and sour type theme. So the drink's going to be paired up with that. We have some Contro um, uh, Cap Frank ice wine from Niagara Falls here in Ontario, and then we've got some Moet champagne. So we'll start with the drink because that's yes. the priority, right? Right. Just loosen loosen me up a little bit. Make sure you know. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it, food's a lot better when you're a little drunk, right? Woo! And we didn't break a light. Amazing. <laughs> so I've got dinner and a show now, right? Exactly. All right, so you've got, is that a shaker? It's a shaker tin, right? Uh, yeah, so I've got a shaker tin with a little bit of ice. Okay. And uh, we're just using our mixer here. So this is, I do the, oh, champagne. I'm going to pour in about eight full shots of that. Mind you, they're not really full shots because... Obviously, the champagne's foaming as it goes in. Right. Don't make the mistake of putting the lid on and shaking this like I did the first time I made this drink, okay. and the entire drink went flying all <laughs> over the kitchen. Unless you want things to get a little bit messy, it's it an excuse to clean up, right? Exactly. <laughs> that or take off clothes, one of the two. <laughs> so, next, that's the so we have eight parts, eight parts of the champagne, okay. and then I'm going to do four parts of the Cab Franc. Ice wine, if I have enough here. There you go. I had exactly enough. <laughs> And then half of a shot of Contro. Not very much. This stuff is really, really strong. And that's uh, an orange flavored liqueur, correct? Yeah, yeah. It's like a citrus flavored um, citrus? liqueur. Put it on. Do a little shake. I'm just putting my hand on the top. That way it doesn't blow the lid off and I can release the gas as I go. Let it sit. And to play with that kind of little sweet concept, I brought along some cotton candy as a garnish. How important do you find garnishing is when you're making drinks or when you're plating food? Extremely. I mean, the same goes with it. I mean, it's a way of plating, right? I mean, you can pour any drink into a, um, 
into a glass and without a good garnish. It's for the most part they all look the same unless you have something that's kind of suspended in the drink. And this, if it's edible as well, the garnish that goes an extremely long way. Do you find that most for the most part garnishes should be edible? Do you think? Um, I like them that way. I mean, what's the point of it? It just looks good. I mean, an apple martini if you do it with a little bit of cheese and apple on there. Mm. Cheers. All right, let's see how this works. Oh, it's so good. Thank you. So you've got the sweet and sour. Yeah. We're going to pair that with our food. So a lot of this, scallops are easy to do. I'm going to have some of this, so that's okay. Go for it. That's okay. why it's edible, right? <laughs> okay. So. So scallops are easy to do. Just sear them on a hot pan, two minutes on one side, minute on the other, depending on the size of it. You can see how to do that on my YouTube channel. And I've got some butternut squash puree here. All right. That we already pureed. Um, we roasted that in the oven for, I don't know, half an hour or so with a whole lot of butter on there. So not exactly healthy, but it looks good. And what we're gonna do is grab a scoop of it and just drop a couple scoops onto the plate. Okay. Like this. Really important part about this technique, and hopefully I nail it right the first time because we're on TV. Just wipe <laughs> off the back of the spoon, All right. put it down, and just kind of do a little oh, swoosh. Oh, so that's how you do that. It's really important that when you do it, you don't don't try and do like gradual slow motions. Just put it down and pull. I'm going to try one. Yeah, that's what the third hopefully one's there for. Okay. <laughs> All so right. pull it over to this direction because we're going to have a little uh, salad over there. There you go. Perfect. She, you're a pro. All right. All right. Moving along. So we'll put this over here out of the way. So we brought along a little bit of watercress, mm. a little fun microgreen. And we're gonna put some pomegranate seeds. Oh, those Both are Both for awesome. color and flavor. It tastes amazing for a little salad. Yeah, I know. I love the, the color contrast that's going on. And Plop our scallops on top here. Oh, it looks so pretty. And then earlier I made, there's a little bit of a process, so we didn't have time to make it. This is a, a raspberry caviar. Um, so using agar agar, which makes gels, mm -hmm. and reverse or oil, cold oil spherification, you can make caviar out of almost anything, which again, you can see on That's the YouTube so channel. Neat. So we're just gonna kind of sprinkle a little bit of these in here. And all of this stuff is simple. Like you watch one YouTube video and you can do it for the most part. You might need a round of practice. And the last thing I have is a wasabi foam. Again, there's, if you use a, this little powder you have, I think it's called soy lettuce and I always pronounce it wrong. I'm sure I'm saying it wrong and somebody <laughs> online is gonna correct me. Whatever. <laughs> um, and I've taken wasabi, a little bit of water, and we're gonna drop just a little bit of, oh, I'm getting more of the water on there. A little bit of the foam on top. Oh, look how pretty you. And we're good to go. I've made a bit of a mess in the process, but I'm sure you it tastes okay. good. But it looks awesome. Now, how long does a meal like this usually take to kind of like prep and, and get done? There's not a lot of prep in doing that. I mean, the thing that takes the longest is maybe to do that caviar process. 10 minutes or something like that to do the caviar and then uh, 10 minutes to do your scalps and 30 minutes probably for the puree. Now because it's a clean eating show, you know, we, we, we have our cheat meals, that's mm -hmm. totally okay. Um, I know that you had mentioned there's, I guess, was it butter or cream that's in the? Butter. It's butter. Lots so of butter. have you ever tried doing it with like stock or maybe olive oil? Just. I'm sure you could. Um, I haven't tried it like that. Tried it? Well, I'm just Cook, cooking you know. healthy is not my forte. <laughs> I, I, I subscribe Absolutely. to the 80-20 tw <laughs> rule. Yeah. Advocate, you know what I mean? It's clean eats. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I fully support you in what you do, right? Yep. And, and, and I wouldn't try to test you on it at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the clean eats part, not my forte. Making it look sexy, more yeah. so. Absolutely. Um, as far as the drinks goes, like let's say I didn't have the champagne, mm -hmm. is there anything else that I might be able to substitute or if I didn't have, for example, the Cointreau? Uh, yeah, I mean you could use triple sec, you could use anything to kind of get that, any other flavored liqueur to get that, that angle on it that you could mix in if you don't necessarily want like the orange flavor to it. You could use a triple sec or any other kind of crisp flavored liqueur to mix in with the drink. And if, similarly, if you for some reason couldn't find the cotton candy, we might be able to substitute maybe a fruit. You um, could put a fruit on there. You could do uh, like almost like a sugar rim wouldn't go by without, again, to play with the sweet and the sweet and sour type thing. Just in case someone doesn't have it at home or something, Crush up right? a candy yeah. cane makes a great rimmer as well. That's awesome. Well, Scott, thank you so much for coming in today. I am, can't wait to eat this and, and continue with my drink over here. Yep, so I'm looking forward <laughs> to it. And we got to finish awesome. the champagne as well. Absolutely. All right, well, if you have any more questions, um, if you want to learn more, about making some sexy food whether you're home alone or with that special someone make sure to tune in to Scott Johnson on his YouTube channel sexy food TV I'm Natalia Arbolita with another episode of clean eat